Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, we were looking last class at uh, trying to look at the 2D problem as an analogy of a 1D problem, like we were trying to link 1D x versus t as looking the same as x y that is uh, unsteady 1D problem is equivalent to a 2D steady problem that is what we were trying to look at. Uh, today we have an animation to do that, let us go to the screen. What we are having here is a piston cylinder arrangement where there is a duct and the piston is moving and as it moves these dots are supposed to be representing the gas and uh, the gas the is getting compressed that is the dots are getting closer to each other and this is the interface line the red line which is supposed to be our shock it is shown as if it is outside but it is really supposed to be only inside that region okay that can see that this this is physically possible like right? such a thing is possible to happen so this is our we already solved a problem with this we said that if a piston moves at 20 meter per second and uh, the shock will be going much faster than the piston itself we solved such a problem this is supposed to be some such analogy now we will go to the next one which is supposed to be giving you the feel for what is happening here we are moving the piston parallel to itself in the in the direction in this direction while the piston is moving the other direction okay what we are seeing is we are drawing the trajectory of the piston along with this line and this is the trajectory of the shock what I am doing here is uh, x versus t whatever I was plotting before it is the same thing I am getting here the horizontal line is roughly x versus t and the vertical line is your position uh, the horizontal line is a time axis vertical line is a position axis what we are seeing is if there is something some particle that is coming here only when it sees the shock from that point on it will start moving that is what is represented by this yellow line here and uh, it becomes your trajectory we looked at it on the board last time I just wanted to put an animation in here and if I pick another case here if we follow any point on this line up to this point till the shock touches it it is going to be standing in the same spot after that it starts moving up that is what you are seeing here okay. that is the idea. Okay. Now if you look at uh, the angles we are going to label them the same way what we are going to use in the class the angle of the line representing the piston path is denoted by theta and the angle representing the line denoted for the shock is given by beta okay. beta is our shock angle if it is x y coordinate system okay. currently we are having x versus t coordinate system and if it becomes x y coordinate system theta is the angle of deflection of this incoming line the particle that comes here is deflected by the shock now I am talking 2D flow okay. when I am having a wall like this along theta direction and incoming flow is straight parallel to the incoming this yellow line then there will be a shock formed at angle beta such that the fluid particle that comes straight when it touches that shock immediately after that it will be turned to go along this line that is the idea and uh, the same thing happens in this particular line also that is what you are saying and you can say that uh, all these lines any any line in between these two those particles will be going in between these two which means my overall fluid element that was here which was having a big volume is now going to be compressed to have a small volume this is where we stopped last class we ended there now I am just going to show you a uh, animation exp uh, explanation for the same thing. Now we uh, that is all we want to show in animation let us go to the board what we want to do is. Uh, we will start with how to look at this oblique shock problem somehow we have to look at this oblique shock problem such that it is easy to solve analytically okay. uh, it so happens that uh, people have already figured out how to look at it uh, it is a way there is a very nice way of looking at it which is again using a moving reference frame we are already comfortable with moving reference frames from one thing to the other now we are going to pick a special reference frame movement let us start with stationary normal shock from now on when I say normal shock is stationary normal shock we will go for moving only later after that I am having some velocity u1 coming in 
and some smaller velocity u2 going out. Now, I want to have my observer, this particular person is going to be moving straight along this normal shock with a velocity v, we are going to pick such a case. If that is the case, what will be the flow field as seen by that moving observer, that is what we want to see. So, we are going to transform to the coordinate system as viewed by uh, the flow field as viewed by this person, this particular observer. So, I have this original velocity vector u1, now I have to add this relative velocity because the flow is going to be going this way with respect to that person, if I add that also, let us say this is my v vector, I will call this capital V1 this will be the velocity of the incoming fluid as seen by the observer and then there is normal shock that is still going to be here, normal shock does not move really, it is in fact moving along this line, we will not see it. Okay. Now, the next thing is u2, we said uh, it has some u2 velocity and the same v vector should be added to it. and this becomes the final net velocity, I have to mark all the velocities, u2, u2 is the same as that plus this relative velocity v should be added, the net velocity is v2, capital V2 there. So, overall what is happening is, if I draw a particular streamline, it comes at this angle and then there is a shock and then this velocity here, it is supposed to be a straight line, just assume it is a straight line that is fine. Okay. So, if I pick another streamline and now I have to be very careful drawing parallel lines, that is going to do something like that. Now, in our flow we have assumed that it is inviscid, which means I can call any streamline as a wall, there is no effect of boundary layer anywhere, I can call any streamline as a wall because no flow can go past that streamline. So, I will transform this to a case which I like, now I want to look at this problem like this, tilt my head and look at it. So, now it will look like I have just rotated the problem slightly to the clockwise direction. this is what I will get. Okay. Now, basically if I look at the normal shock problem with an observer moving along the shock direction with the given velocity, then I am going to get some such case. Now, I transform the coordinates such that it is as absorbed by the particular observer who is moving with respect to the stationary normal shock, this is what that particular person will see is a easy way of looking at the problem, even though I gave an analogy like the piston cylinder arrangement, this is the best way of to transform the thing, the piston analogy which we saw, saw in the animation will have a little bit of error, because there we assumed that the horizontal velocity is a constant, before and after shock it is assumed to be constant which is not the case in real life, okay. but this particular analogy it will work perfect, because we are moving along the line which separates the before and after shock we are moving along the shock basically. Now, we will look at what happens, of course, you have to now mark those angles, these are theta and these are shock angle beta, we will keep those. Okay. Now, what if he is moving with a lesser velocity, I will draw that case again, I have to draw the same kind of lengths for velocity vector, so that it is comparable. Now, he is moving with a lesser velocity v, okay. it is let us say only this length, previously it was that long, now it is lesser, okay. v is lesser, this is the movement of that particular observer. Now, this I want to transform and that is going to go to shock 
the same velocity here, but a smaller relative velocity which will give me some other v 1, same u 1, some other v, I will get some other v 1. On the other side, same u 2, a lesser v, so I will get some other v 2. If I look at this problem the same way as before, I transform this to a flow field, it is going to look like this is how the streamlines will go, which is equivalent to saying there is a small angle of change here, okay. there is a small change here, theta is lesser in this case. What is happening is my theta has decreased, okay. that is what you are noticing here. What happens to beta? Beta would have increased a little bit. Okay. Those are the things that you will see from here. If I change the relative velocity for the observer, then it is going to change the theta and beta for my problem. Is there any other variable in my problem? Of course, the strength of the normal shock itself, which was our original variable in our normal shock problem. So, I can change that also. So, if I say I increase, yeah, let us say I will keep the same v as this one, but I will increase my actually. Yeah, I will keep the same v as this previous case and uh, I am increasing my m 1 or u 1. In our case, it has to be u 1, we will just keep it as u 1, which is equivalent if I say t 1 is the same for all the cases, it is the same thing. Anyway. So, which means my velocity vector upstream is going to be longer and it is the same height, v oh, I have to draw the other case first. And uh, if this is my u 2, oh sorry u 1 sorry, u 2 will be much smaller, right. We know that already. If we have high u 1, u 2 will be lesser because my Mach number increases, it is much stronger, it will be stopping the flow much more drastically. So, it will be a smaller u 2. Now, I will transform this the same way as before. Now, it is going to become I need more space it looks like, the vector itself is too long. And the same v I have to add, and this will be my v, v 1 sorry. This is my u 1, this is my v and that is my v 1. And if I pick the same u 2 from here across here, it is a small value, I have drawn it too long. And I will add this v, and I am going to get some particular v 2. If I turn my head slightly so that this is horizontal in my eye, then I will get a particular picture that is looking like it is turning that nicely and the shock angle is something like this. This is what I will get. Okay, I just took a shortcut. I should have gone and drawn this kind of picture and then came back to this picture. I just took a shortcut. I am just telling you that the gap between beta and theta will become lesser if I increase my u 1. The gap between beta and theta will be higher if I increase my v, if I decrease my v. That is what we have done till now. Okay. Basically, I am telling I need these two as my variables for my fixing my problem. Okay, if I want to say I want to choose a particular oblique shock problem, I have to pick a particular u 1 and a particular velocity with which my observer is moving along the normal shock. If I pick these two, then I will get to a nice condition which will match my flow problem. Okay. 
of course will this work we are just going through some particular analytical approach will it work if it is not working i would not be teaching you this currently okay, that is the only proof for it okay. we know it works because gas dynamics people have been using this for a long time okay why do we need two variables now previously it was just one variable normal shock i want to give strength i needed only one variable that is the strength of the shock p2 by p1 or m1 the mach number of the shock any one variable given i can give every other property for the shock now we need two variables why is that it's 2d one more dimension extra so i have to give some information about the second dimension okay so i need one more dimension so i need one more data point on that that's the reason why we need two variables now of course it's not very nice to look for this v and u1 as the two variables instead of that we have to come up with better variables we will go and look at that soon beta and theta could be nice variables but they are related so probably i should pick m1 and theta or m1 and beta it will work we will go and look at that as time goes okay so now uh, we will start solving the problem as if it is a fresh problem we want to uh, assume that yes i can solve the problem by using normal shock analogy with uh, uh, relative velocity with respect to observer added and then it will work because it is a very complex thing to find that v value, value okay, to fit my problem instead we will just go pick uh, this just to give you a feel for what is actually happening right we will just go start with solving as if it is some new problem in gas dynamics i am going to say it is a sh there is a shock which has angle beta with respect to my reference line which could be my horizontal axis and there is an incoming velocity u1 this u1 is different from the u1 we have been discussing in the previous page of the board right this u1 is now in 2d plane it is parallel to my reference line that is my u1 right now okay. Now, we already know that we want to look at it somewhat related to normal shock. So, I have to decompose this into normal component and tangential component along the shock. We want to get to these two components. When I do that naturally this angle will become beta because I am looking for tangential and I am going to label this as my u tangential. Ideally, I should call it u tangential 1, okay. And then this my u1 normal, okay. Ideally, it should be u1t. You will say you will see that u1t and u2t are the same. Okay. Now, I will draw the other picture from u1 normal. I know that there will be a small u2 normal because it is a normal shock based thing and we said that this tangential velocity is like velocity along the shock wave which is related to my the small v in the previous discussion right it is related to my movement of my refer, uh, observer my reference frame if you want to think about okay. So, this cannot change across the shock. So, I will just keep the same value here so, that is why I did not put it as u t 1 I will just remove it now, it is just u t u tangential, we will keep it just that. This is my u 2 normal and u tangential is going to be the same, I think this is the same roughly. And this is your final velocity vector u 2, while this is u 2 u t. I have drawn it such that this line goes straight through this okay. and so it looks as if the velocity vector has shifted ideally I have to move this triangle such that this vertex comes and touches this point and move this triangle such that this vector touches this point then only it is exactly correct. But it is just to give a feel for what is happening this is the same thing happening at every point along this shock. So, I could say that it is the same now what is my theta angle? it is the angle with respect to my original reference line in my 2d problem made by the final velocity vector after the shock if i extend this line 
that u2 line if I extend that is the theta I am talking about okay. So what can I tell about the relation between u1 n and u1 that is just direct trigonometry here it will be u1 sin beta is my u1 normal. u1 sin beta and ut equal to u1 cos beta okay. Now we want to write something more okay. Uh, of course I can also say that uh, m1 normal equal to u1 normal by a1 which is equal to u1 by a1 which is m1 m1 sin beta it just comes out to be that okay we will just keep it there we will not use this relation immediately we will use it after some time. Now I want to look at this triangle again in a little more detail I will take this triangle draw it a little bigger I change the angles let us say we want to worry about this change in angle from that uh, actually do it correct. Now it may be right, yeah, close. And we know that this is our 90 degree angle because this is normal and this tangential, this is our 90 degree angle. Now I want to relate this u2 with this u2 normal, which means I should know either this angle or this angle what I currently know is this angle, this angle is known to be theta that is what I know and I also know that this u tangential is parallel to my shock which means with respect to my reference line this is having an angle beta these are the things I know already. So now I need to find let us say I want to find this angle so that I will get a sin theta relation. So I want to find this angle how will I find it this is some 8 standard trigonometry I think. So I, I am drawing parallel line parallel to this original reference line now you look at a slant line with parallel line you know this angle will be beta right included opposite angle I do I think that is what it is called. So this whole thing is beta and now I know there is one more parallel line here which means this angle is theta this triple thing angle is theta from here to here while the whole thing is beta which means this particular angle which I am talking about this particular angle I am talking about will become beta minus theta that is what it should come out to be this particular angle between u2 vector and ut vector that is what I should get. Once I get this, this triangle is very simple to solve. I can relate any two vectors with the third one because I know trigonometry. Okay. So now I can go and write u2 normal is equal to u2 times sin of beta minus theta. I wanted sin, so I took this angle. If I wanted cos, I would have used this angle, which will be 90 minus beta minus theta. Anyways, so it is going to be u2 times sin of this angle will be this which is from trigonometry simple stuff. Now ut I have another expression u2 cos beta minus theta remember this this will be used after some time okay ut has two values but I know ut is the same across both. So I can link this u1 cos beta and u2 cos of beta minus theta later we will do it that is one relation between beta and theta. So if I want to find m2 normal all I have to do is divide by a2 similar to that I will get it to be m2 cos uh, m2 sin sorry. m2 sin beta minus theta this is what I will get. Now of course it, it is so tempting to just go and start using normal shock tables with m1 normal because we know it already okay. 
because we said that uh, only thing that matters across this u1 normal and u1 u2 normal with respect to my observer it is just a normal shock flow which means u1 normal and u2 normal are related by my normal shock let us say i don't want to do that i want to do analysis from scratch as if i don't know normal shock relations okay and then after some time we'll say yes i know normal shock relations okay. if i want to do that i have to start with mass conservation momentum conservation energy conservation across the shock for a 2d problem so i'll go start again with a shock at angle beta now i'm going to pick a control volume like this this is my control volume i am picking assume it's a rectangle there seems to be a bend there okay. and i am saying there is a velocity incoming that's u1 normal and it also has a tangential velocity incoming ut on the other side there is u2 normal outgoing it also has a tangential velocity ut outgoing i am drawing it differently now previously i wanted to add vectors now i want to show that at this point this is the vector velocity okay. i want to solve this problem by shifting my coordinate system to parallel and perpendicular to my shock so that it is easy to solve because i already know the velocity vectors in these dimensions it is easier to solve that way let us say the area on this line for my control volume is a some area for the flow for the normal flow alone the other region let us say i have a a upstream and a a downstream and i am picking a rectangle such that a up is same here and here and a down is same here and here that's nice to look that particular case so that your equations become simpler now first thing i want to do is conservation of mass momentum energy along the shock direction along the shock direction first we'll pick that that is along the tangential direction so let's pick mass if i pick mass conservation if i pick along this direction it's as if it's a 1d problem so i can start using my 1d relations rho u a is constant for my control volume it's a big control volume i'm going to say rho u a is constant so i have to find out how much is the mass entering through this section through this section how much is leaving this section this section okay i have to link all of them together so my mass expression will be rho 1 times u tangential times a upstream plus rho 2 u tangential a downstream these are the masses that are entering this way which is equal to rho 1 u tangential a upstream again there plus rho 2 u tangential a downstream it so happens that this is automatically satisfied always for any value of ut okay it's a silly equation it looks like it's identically satisfied for any value of ut okay that's all we see so ut cannot be governed by this equation really it is automatically satisfied for any value of course this is happening because i have picked my control volume such that a upstream is the same for both the sections here and here it's the same a down is same here and here if i picked something else then i have to take into account that there is a change and then it will become more complex problem to solve let's not worry about that okay. now next i want to do momentum equation momentum conservation now momentum conservation i have to be worried about it's a 2d problem so i have to worry about two different momentums going along this way of course when it is going along the shock it can be my along the shock momentum that's going along the shock or the normal momentum being carried by the mass flow this way along the shock both are possible let us say we'll pick the tangential momentum first if i pick the tangential momentum that is ut being carried by the mass flow this way 
that will be rho 1 u t a up times u t, this is my mass flow rate times momentum uh, times velocity becomes my momentum rate. Okay. Of course, I have to have this is a normal component, no? so I should have a pressure also along with this P1 I will call this okay. plus on the other section P1 A, o, A up sorry A up is also there with this, okay. I am looking at only this section okay. and uh, plus this downstream section P2 A down plus rho 2 u t a down u t, this is all the momentum entering this way. Now, this has to be equal to the momentum leaving on the other side, which is equal to if I do the same thing here, I will get exactly the same relation a of p 1, because it is still on the same side of the shock plus rho 1 u t a up is my mass flow rate multiplied by u t again plus the other section exactly the same thing will come up again p 2 a down plus rho 2 u t a down times u t. It so happens that this expression is also identically satisfied, okay. tangential momentum equation is identically satisfied. Let us look at normal momentum that is the u 1 normal being carried by the mass flow going this way that is also happening. If I do that since it is this way momentum the pressure term will not be there in that, it will just be without pressure uh, normal, normal momentum equation, normal momentum equation uh, there will be no p 1 related and there is no shear stress we assumed it to be 0, so there is no other stress on this area it will just be rho 1 u t a up times u 1 normal plus rho 2 u t a down times u 2 normal. These are the net momenta of normal momentum being carried by this mass this way. This is equal to on the other end again you will get the same thing a up times u 1 normal plus rho 2 u t a down times u 2 normal. Again it comes up that it looks like some expression equal to the same expression which means it is again identically satisfied. Okay. So, you are coming up with some set of expressions which looks as if the tangential component will work irrespective of whatever u t I pick. Okay. Now, let us uh, if, if I, I do not want to do the energy again you will again see that uh, m dot times h if I put h plus u square that will again give exactly the same kind of result. So, I do not want to do it. Okay. Let us say that uh, tangential component uh, uh, transfer or transport along tangential component is not very useful for us. It is not giving me any governing equation really, it is just telling me A equal to A or B equal to B something like that, not very useful. Let us go to the normal direction, okay. the same picture I am going to solve for normal direction across area A. Now, I will get rho 1 u 1 normal times A equal to this is my mass, mass conservation rho 2 u 2 normal times A this is one expression, yes this is very different, it is not A equal to A kind of relation, so we need to keep it. Next one normal momentum component, normal momentum component it is going to have P 1 times A plus rho 1 U 1 normal A times U 1 normal equal to, again I am using 1 D relations because I am having flow only along that, I am considering only that side, we have decoupled the problem P 2 A plus rho 2 u 2 normal A times u 2 normal. Okay. 
this is what I have here does not seem like anything will get simplified we will keep it as is tangential momentum tangential momentum being transported along the normal direction that is going to look like rho 1 u 1 normal a times the tangential velocity this is going to be equal to rho 2 u 2 normal a times the tangential velocity. Now, in here I could have assumed that u t 1 is different from u t 2, okay. if I assumed that then all these expressions none of them will go to 0, actually I should go back here. So, if I had gone and said that u t 1 is different from u t 2, okay, if I ever said that then I will have a situation where none of these expressions will become identically 0. Actually, even then it will all become identically 0. So, I do not need to worry about this whole set of expressions. Tangential transport is always 0, but even if I said u t 1 is different from u t 2, I will go here now tangential momentum, where I will get u t 1 here, u t 2 here. Now, if I go and use the mass relation inside here, if you put rho 2 u 2 normal a is equal to rho 1 u 1 normal a then I will get rho 1 u 1 normal a times u t 2, you will get from here that u t 1 equal to u t 2, okay. that is what you will get finally. Okay. But if I do not do that, if I already know that u t is constant because I am saying it is the velocity with which my observer is moving along my normal shock, once I say that u t is the same, that is what I have used and that is the understanding I used to solve this. If I did not use that, then I will get u t 1 equal to u t 2 at this point. Okay. Now, since I used it, this equation just becomes mass equation, it is not anything new, it is a dependent equation, it is in fact the same equation multiplied by u t, okay. it is not giving anything new. We will go to energy equation. H 1 plus half u 1 normal square. H 2 plus half u 2 normal square. Now, is this correct? Not really because kinetic energy when I call it kinetic energy, it does not know direction. Okay. So, I cannot just write u 1 normal square or u 2 normal square alone, I should also take into account u t square, okay. that is what it should be really. So, this is not really true, but uh, wait a minute, we will keep this expression, but I will write the more correct expression which is half u 1 square half u 2 square, I will write it this way, this is the perfect equation, this is correct, okay. as long as there is no heat transfer across, there is no work done by the fluid and those kind of other expectations, this is correct. This is your basic H not 1 equal to H not 2 relation which we had in normal shock also. Now, since I know from before that u t 1 equal to u t 2, when I decompose this expression u 1 square u, u will become u square will become u t square plus u normal square. Of course, I can put subscript 1 or 2 for both it will work that is why I did not put 1 or 2. Okay. If I do that, and I say that u t 1 equal to u t 2, this expression reduces to this expression. Okay. This is the more correct expression h not 1 equal to h not 2, this is the more correct expression. It so happens that this becomes this if I use u t 1 equal to u t 2. Okay. So, we will keep this expression also. Now, we want to say something special. I want to say that if I pick equations 1, 2 and 3, if I pick these 3 equations, they look exactly same as what we had for stationary normal shock some 8 or 9 classes before. Okay, when we derived the normal shock, we had the, this exact same set of equations without the subscript n, that is the only change. Okay. 
that is why I wanted to write this expression here. Ideally, it should be written this way and with this, it should become this. I wanted to write it like this, so that I can just say 1, 2 and 3 directly. Okay. Since I am getting exactly the same differential equations, the solution should be exactly the same. Okay. It is not differential equation, sorry, differential equation can have different solutions based on boundary, this is algebraic expression. Algebraic expression will give exactly the same answer, which means I do not need to go and solve this whole thing and spend two more extra lectures for getting to m2 to m1 relation. It is going to be the exactly same derivation, I know I will just uh, skip that part and say that if I put u1 normal alone in my normal shock calculations, I will get that particular for a set of solutions directly from there. Okay. That is the important aspect, we have to just convert to normal component from original coordinates and then we will start solving the whole problem. If I go to that picture, it is easier to look at, not this picture I think, I will take this picture. If I go to this picture, if I am given this u1 and this beta, let us say, then if I want to find p2 by p1 across the shock, all I have to do is go find the u1 normal. After that, if I go to the equations, it will all look like normal shock equations. So, I will get my solution same as normal shock table solutions. I will go find the m1 normal, from there I will go find m2 normal, actually I do not need m2 normal currently, we wanted only p2 by p1. So, from m1 normal in my normal shock stationary normal shock tables, I will get p2 by p1 across and that is my solution for the problem. If I wanted the velocity direction, then I have to go find u2 normal and find this ut put this triangle, complete it and get the v2 okay. or of course, you can cheat and say I will go use this function. Okay. I will go use this function and I will get my u2 from beta and theta, I can get the relations. Okay. Any way I want, I can do, it is all the same, it is all trigonometry. Okay. So, we have different ways of looking at this problem and uh, we found that t naught 2 by t naught 1 is equal to 1 even for an oblique shock, even if there is extra velocity there on the tangential component. Why is that? It is because the tangential velocity is the same before and after, that is a special reason. P naught 2 by P naught 1 will be less than 1, which you will see that is similar to normal shock, normal shock uh, P naught 2 by P naught 1, okay. that is what you will get. Okay. Now, we want to start uh, solving for beta, theta in terms of each other. If I ever go and write expression for P2 by P1 for an oblique shock, how will I write it? It is not very difficult to write. It is going to be the same expression as in normal shock. Okay. So, P2 by P1 equal to 1 plus 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 times m1 square minus 1. This was one relation. Uh, just check whether this relation is correct. I think it is correct. Okay. I do not have that expression here. Okay. So, here instead of it being m1, all I have to do is make it m1 normal. Then suddenly I solve this problem to get p2 by p1. Okay. All I have to do is this. But uh, will I know my m1 normal already? that is related to my beta, we said that uh, m1 normal is equal to m1 sin beta. So, as long as I do not know my beta, I cannot tell my p2 by p1. If beta is 90 degrees, of course, I will get the same thing, then the shock becomes normal shock, okay. it is perpendicular to the flow direction and u tangential becomes 0 naturally. So, to solve this, I need to basically it is coming down to I need to give m1 and beta for me to solve the problem, which is what we said some time back, I need two variables to define this problem fully. Now, once I know this, can I find theta? Ideally, I should be able to find theta. How will I do it? Let us say we will go back to this board. If I am given m1 and beta and of course, I am given all the properties in state 1 then I can say that I can find m1 and beta from u1 and beta. Once I know m1 and beta, 
I can find u1 normal or m1 normal, from there I will get m2 normal. I already know u tangential because I am given beta, u1 cos beta will be my u tangential. It is the same value here, which means I know ut here. Once I know ut here and u2 normal here, I will know the final vector u2 and I have u2 normal already. If I have these two, I will go to this expression u2 normal equal to u2 times sin of beta minus theta. In this, I know u2 normal, u2, I know beta. Only thing I do not know is theta, so I can get theta from here. Okay. But this is such a big process to get to theta. So instead, we want to write an expression for directly theta equal to some big expression in terms of m1 and beta. That is the goal for us the next uh, few moments. Okay. We are trying to get to that point. So, the way to do it, we already said that uh, ut is equal to u1 cos beta from the downstream section, it is equal to u2 cos of beta minus theta. We know this already. Now, I am going to use the other expression from the next page again, which was u1 in terms of u1 normal. Now I am going to use just, just this, these two as my equation, u1 in terms of u1 normal will be u1 normal divided by sin beta multiplied by this cos beta equal to again u2 normal, uh, u2 in terms of u2 normal will be u2 normal by sin beta minus theta multiplied by this cos beta, cos beta minus theta. I have this expression. From here, I can write u1 normal by u2 normal equal to this tan beta, this will become tan beta on the denominator which I will take it to that side, it will become tan beta by tan of beta minus theta. Okay. This is one relation between u1 normal and u2 normal, we know one more. What is that in terms of m1, okay. m1 normal sorry, the normal shock relation. Okay. But uh, let us say we want to write the full expression right now, I will just call it this is equal to rho 2 by rho 1, which is true from mass equation in the normal direction, it will be true, we are going to get to this form. Okay. Of course, I can write uh, in terms of m1, which is our old formula gamma plus 1 times it should be m1 square, but in our case it is m1 square sin square beta. I have used m1 normal square and I have substituted in terms of m1. This divided by 2 plus gamma minus 1 times m1 square again. Again I am going to put m1 sin beta square, m1 square sin square beta. This is what I get. Now what I have to do is take this equal to this and manipulate it such that I will get tan theta equal to something. Okay. I have to expand this and make it tan theta equal to something. Instead of directly starting with this, I do not want to write this expression for so many times, I will just put rho 2 by rho 1 for a few seconds and then we will go and substitute this to get to some big expression. Okay. I will not uh, finish this today, I will go to a point where rho 2 by rho 1 if I substitute I will get a good answer, I will not substitute rho 2 by rho 1 today. Okay. So I have tan beta by tan of beta minus theta equal to rho 2 by rho 1. Now, you should know expansion for tan of beta minus theta which is equal to tan beta minus tan theta divided by 1 plus tan beta tan theta. Okay, you should know this. If I use that expansion, then I am going to get to a form where this is equal to tan beta multiplied by 1 plus 
tan beta tan theta divided by tan beta minus tan theta. Now what I want to do is club this denominator with this tan beta take it to my left hand side of this expression just this equal to this expression and I do that I will end up with rho 2 by rho 1 multiplied by 1 minus tan theta by tan beta okay. and this is equal to 1 plus tan beta tan theta. This is what I will have. Now I wanted tan theta equal to something. I have to group all the tan theta terms together. So I will take this tan theta term to the other side and I will write tan theta terms on left of my new equation. Tan theta multiplied by it is going to be tan beta in here tan beta this minus sign when it goes there will become plus. So plus rho 2 by rho 1 times 1 by tan beta. This is one term now I will take this 1 to the other side this is equal to minus 1 here and rho 2 by rho 1 here rho 2 by rho 1 minus 1 this will become my expression. So, I will end up with tan theta equal to rho 2 by rho 1 minus 1 times tan beta uh, times tan beta here right divided by tan square beta plus rho 2 by rho 1. So now I have an expression for tan theta which from which if I invert tan I will get theta okay, in terms of rho 2 by rho 1 and beta where now my rho 2 by rho 1 depends on my m1 and beta okay, m1 sin beta it is related to m1 normal. Okay. So next class we will substitute that m1 normal in here and simplify this expression everything in terms of m1 which is the original Mach number and beta. So, uh, we will continue that part and it will give you a very nice expression, we will do that next class, see you in the next class.